The following is a live broadcast of a Lone Star Community Radio program. Recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and Facebook.com slash IRLoneStar. For more information on this show, please visit our show page at IRLoneStar.com slash shows. To sponsor or donate to this program, visit our donate page at IRLoneStar.com slash donate, or email us at lscrstudios at gmail.com, or give us a call at 936-666-1084. Lone Star Community Radio production and broadcast is possible by folks like you. So sponsor and donate today. Howdy, howdy, everybody. This is Jared Sterrett, and you're listening to KZCC LP 106.1 Conroe and KZCW LP 104.5 in Conroe and worldwide at OurLoneStar.com. Welcome to Veterans Air, the Veterans Hour, your source for news, talk, and uncensored commentary here on your Lone Star Community Radio. I'm your host, Douglas B., and you can listen to us live the first Friday, no, the first Tuesday of every month here on uh, Lone Star Community Radio at 1 p.m. Oh, I screwed that up, didn't I? It's okay. We'll move on. Everybody knows who the hell I am. Uh, as always, we're going to do a little housekeeping. How can you get hold of us? You can contact Veterans Air through the website at www.veteransair.us. Leave us a message, or better yet, text us in the studio on our Google phone, 936-344-3083. Um, there is, oh no, wait, yeah, let's do that. I want to do a little sick call first. This is going out to Lynn Marie from Quilts for Vets. Um, she has a little stomach bug, Lynn Marie. I hope you get to feeling better. Um, I hope you all tuned into her show to see from last month when we talked about uh, Uncle Wiggly Wings. Uh, that actually happened, and she broadcasted it out on her Facebook Live channel. I was indisposed, so I did not counter-broadcast it or simulcast it, whatever we call that. But you should go check it out. Um, today, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk a lot. And I am joined in the studio today with our new intern, Lucas, the unshaven one. <laughs> uh, this will be the last time he comes on. Um, there is there is no shortage of topics that we can talk about this month. We could talk about the elections. We could talk about the riots. We could even talk about COVID-19. But today, we're going to talk about September 11th, 9-11. We're going to talk about how this country cannot survive without our police, firemen, first responders. And if you happen to be a BLM or a TIVA supporter, you might want to tune out now because I'm pretty sure you aren't going to like today's show. A couple of things of note before we get started. Um, last month we talked about D.V. Hawk came down had some appointments to get his draw reconstructed that the VA is not paying for. And so he is selling the two motorcycles, the two Harleys. And uh, you need to go. He's raffling them off at $100 a piece raffle. Um, you can file, find the link below in our show links. Go ahead and buy a raffle ticket. Um, gives him an excuse to drive it down to you. Also, DV Tanya has not yet sold her house. And it needs to sell. Please, somebody go buy this house. It is the perfect house for veterans. It is a one, two, three bedroom, two full bath, huge house, huge fenced yard. Um, and it is set up for DVs. So go take a look at it in Corpus Christi. We're going to start the show by talking about two organizations. Um, one that is specifically for 9-11. You may or may not have heard of it. We had them on last year. Uh, TunnelsToTowers.org. Let's talk about Tunnels to Towers and Stephen Siller. Because you, you, you may not know the story of what this organization does. What this organization does is it goes out and it pays off the mortgages for first responders and our fallen military. That's what they do. 
And they are based out of New York, Staten Island, my hometown. But you may be thinking to yourself, well, so what? I'm here in Texas. They do pay off mortgages here in Texas. As a matter of fact, last year, they paid off 11 of them here in Texas. And they have a big golf tournament, or they did before COVID, um, 5K runs, things of that nature, a very worthwhile organization. And it was started by the brothers of Stephen Siller. Now, you may ask yourself, if you're not familiar with Tunnels to Towers, um, who is Stephen Siller? So this is coming from the website. Firefighter Stephen Gerard Siller was the youngest son of seven children born to May and George Siller. At the age of eight, Stephen lost his father. And a year and a half later, his mother passed, leaving him an orphan to be raised by his older siblings. For a while, Stephen went through a period of struggle, but thanks to the love of his siblings and the values instilled in him by his parents, he grew to be an extraordinary individual and a dedicated firefighter. More than most, he knew that time was precious and accomplished much in his short 34 years. September 11, 2001, Stephen, who was assigned to Brooklyn's Squad 1, New York City Fire Department, had just finished his shift, and he was on his way to play golf with his brothers. He got the word over the scanner that a plane hit the North Tower. Upon hearing this news, Stephen called his wife Sally and asked her to tell his brothers he would catch up to them later, and he returned to Squad 1 to get his gear. Stephen drove his truck to the entrance of the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, but it had already been closed for security purposes. Determining to carry out his duty, he strapped on 60 pounds of gear to his back and raced on foot through the tunnel to the Twin Towers. Stephen gave his life saving people from that burning hell. Stephen had everything to live for. He had a great wife, five wonderful children, a devoted extended family, and many friends. Stephen's parents were lay Franciscans, and they grew up under the guiding philosophy of St. Francis of Assisi, whose encouraging and inspirational phrase, while we have time, let us do good, were the words Stephen lived by. Stephen's life and heroic death served as a reminder to all of us to live life to the fullest and to spend our time here on earth doing good. And this is his legacy. Let's think about this for a moment. A firefighter, 34 years old, off duty, heard the call on the scanner, strapped on 60 pounds of firefighting gear and raced through the city streets of New York to ultimately give his life, saving others in the Twin Towers, September 11th, 2001. America, you swore you would never forget. If you watch TV, listen to the radio, you may have heard Tunnels for Towers ads about asking for donations. I think you should donate to this organization. I do. It's 11 bucks a month because the good that they do for our firefighters, police, first responders, military is unparalleled in my opinion. Unlike a lot of organizations that have overhead and take a portion of whatever you donate to keep the organization running, Tunnels for Towers, tunnels, tunnel2towers.org does not do this. 100% of the donations go to paying off the mortgages, to building houses for the disabled veterans and firefighters, policemen. It's something that we need to think about. Because in today's tumultuous, tumultuous, in today's society, in our times that we're living in, it is popular to be behind defund the police. It's popular to 
have hate and disdain for your political rivals. Policemen, firemen, first responders, they don't care. If you're in danger, they will come rescue you. Your star athlete, your pop music icon, none of them are going to come save you. The police and firemen will. When you're laying on the bathroom floor sure that you're going to die, it's an EMT first responder that's coming to save your life. And it bothers me the way that we treat them in today's society. Tunneltotowers.org, go help them out. I want to also talk to you about a, a new organization that I just found came to my attention. Um, and I called the number and I talked to Mike. He's the president of this organization. It's called Hero Sports. Now, Hero Sports is a 501c3 nonprofit for military that plays sports and recreation activities to increase mental and physical health and team building. Now, we know a lot of organizations and we hear a lot of organizations that are doing good for our veterans. And they, they specifically focus on one thing, PTSD, TBIs, um, amputations, things of this nature. Hero Sports doesn't care. All it cares is that you want to play. You want to be part of a team. And you know what? A lot of us, when we get out of the military and we feel that there's something missing, it's that team sense, that sense of being part of something that we miss, even though we may not know it. Sports is a good way to do it. Now, if any of you know me, you know I am not coordinated enough to play sports. Just not. Um, what are you laughing at? Patron moves walls and furniture for me to trip over. I am convinced of this. And Dick, wait, you haven't been married long enough, but it'll come to you too. One day, you're going to run into a door jam, trip over the couch. Holly has moved it just a little bit. So, yeah, that'll happen to you. He's shaking his head. No, that's not going to happen. Yeah, it will. Um, well, but you, anyway. You forget she's uh, four foot 11. So her moving something isn't really going to happen. Yeah, but she's a powerhouse. I think she could take you. But she does misplace a lot of stuff. <laughs> I think she's making jokes on me. <laughs> I found an old wallet about two years later. And it was in a uh, casserole dish that was at the very top of the cabinetry. And I was like, why is my wallet inside this casserole dish? Oh, I don't know. Well, you know, I had to replace everything in that wallet. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Welcome to married life. I, I, I joke. Patron and I have been married 36 years last month. How she put up with me for that long, I have no idea. Um, Lucas is over here is dying. You guys should see him. He's dying. Um, Mike from Hero Sports, he says this, not all wounds are visible, and our group provides a positive atmosphere among veterans and soldiers to ensure that they know they are not alone. Hero Sports wants to be an example for others going through issues transitioning from the combat zone to civilian life and show ways that would assist in their transition. Hero Sports is also involved in other community events as a display of our thanks for our support. On the screen right now, if you're watching, you will see that they have an event coming up September 11th through the 13th in Victoria, Texas. And I talked to Mike about this because it caught my eye. So what you're going to do is you're going to go over to their Facebook page, the link's below, and you're just going to type in whether you're a veteran, a firefighter, policeman, EMT, whatever, just, just one word. And they're going to put all that in a hat and they're going to pull out your name. And if you get one of these lucky persons that, that gets your name pulled, get yourself to Victoria, Texas. Because from September 11th through the 13th, you're going to be hosted at a private ranch down in Victoria, Texas. Everything's included, lodging, food, the whole nine yards. You need to get yourself there. And you're just going to hang out with other people, play some sports, eat some barbecue, drink some brews, have a good time. 
maybe fire off some weapons. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're going to be doing that too. And two lucky people that are selected, you two lucky people are going on an alligator hunt. That's right. While you're there at the ranch, hanging out with fellow veterans, policemen, firemen, whatnot, you're going to, you may be selected to go on an alligator hunt. I've never been on an alligator hunt. You ever been on an alligator hunt? Didn't intend to go on one, but yeah, I've shot an alligator before. You killed a belt? I'm yeah. disappointed. No, I'm not. I actually, I, I, I don't know if this qualifies as a hunt or not. I used to have an employee that worked for me, um, a Louisiana and Cajun, Jefferson Dupree, God rest his soul. Um, Jefferson invited me to his mama's house one day, and I drove out to Louisiana to go see him. Um, and he said, we're going to go and we're going to you know, get some stuff for dinner tonight. So I figured we were going into town because he lived way out in the middle of nowhere. No, we got into a John boat and went out into the swamp and we got ourselves an alligator. I was scared because Jefferson, he had to be a good four or 500 pounds. He stepped into this boat. I thought for sure we were going to sink, but we didn't. And we got ourselves an alligator. And, and I can say with 100% confidence that I will never do that again. Trying to get an alligator kill it and get it into a John boat? No, 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 no. Because sometimes the alligator really ain't dead. He's just playing dead. And I didn't know alligators were that strong. They're strong. Do you know why an alligator tastes like chicken? No, why? God ran out of flavors. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> where, where am I at? Oh, I got plenty of time. Um, we're going to have a, a commentary Today, I'm going to get on my soapbox. But before I do that, I want to tell you what's happening here in September. Um, September 11th, there are two events that I draw your attention to. Patriot Day of Remembrance in the morning and the First Responders Day in the evening. This is going to be hosted <clears throat> September 11th at the Woodlands Central Fire Station and the Town Green Park, respectively. Patriot Day of Remembrance is scheduled from 7.30 to 8 a.m. at the Central Fire Station, 9951 Grogan's Mill Road, and members of the Woodlands Fire Department, Honor Guard, and others will conduct the presentation of colors and do a reading of the Fireman's Prayer, as well as the time-honored tradition, ringing of the bell that honors fallen firefighters. Did you know this? He's shaking his head yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucas, the unshaven one, is a firefighter. That's right. He's one of your firefighters. That's what he did in the military. Put out fires. They call me the fireman. That's my name. Do I embarrass you? This is why you're not on, 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 on camera and saying anything, because I just embarrass the hell out of you. You've listened to the show before. You should have realized this was going to happen, Lucas. Um, so in the morning, head on over to Grogan's Mills Fire Department, be part of that Patriots Day of Remembrance. Now, later in the day, the First Responders Day is scheduled, and this is from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the Town Green Park, and that's over at 2099 Lake Robbins Road. At that event, officials will honor and thank first responders for a community gathering featuring the presentation of colors by the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department Honor Guard, and there will be various speakers. I like that. I like that we're doing something in remembrance of 9-11. I said it before, and I'm going to say it multiple times during today's show. America, you promised you'd never forget. Now, September 26th, the VFW Post 4709 is going to host a political forum, meet, greet, and speak. And I think we're still doing uh, an old-fashioned cake auction. Um, this is your chance to come out and greet and meet and speak to the candidates running in the next local elections. All candidates have been invited. I do not have the RSVP list, but I am told by Marcy over there that yes, there will be candidates from all of the different parties. This is your chance, Montgomery County and Conroe, to come on out and actually meet the people that you're going to elect 
to represent you. Now, the VFW was closed thanks to Governor Abbott. And Governor, if you're listening, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Dude. Um, but the bingo hall is open. And this is where we're going to have the meet and greet. Um, when you come in, please bring a mask. We will have masks and hand sanitizers available. And we're also keeping the six-foot separation rule. If you would like to come out in person to meet your candidates and ask questions of them. Um, for those that cannot attend, um, this is going to be done as a Facebook Live event on VFW 4709's page. And at the same time, on the veteransair.us Facebook page, a live event, because Nick here is going to help me figure out how to do that um, so we can make that happen. That's September 26th between 5 and 8.30 p.m. Come on out um, and have a good time. Check it out on the link below. It's a direct link to the political forum on 4709's Facebook page. Uh, uh, damn, I'm need to slow my roll, slow my roll. Um, September 11th, I think everybody knows where they were that day. It's like everybody knows where they were when Kennedy was shot. Everybody knows what they were doing when Elvis died. Everybody, including me, to this day, knows what they were doing and where they were when Lenin died. I do. I was at high school in Toms River, New Jersey, standing at my locker with Queenie, Sunshine, Big John, Rubber Russ, my crew from high school, when we got the news that, that John Lennon had been shot. Sad, sad times. But September 11th was a bit different. Because on September 11th, it touched every single American in more ways than losing the president or losing a, a rock star. For some of us, it was very personal. And almost everyone has seen the footage on their TV. Do you remember where you were the day the world stopped turning? I do. It's been 19 years since that morning. Now, let me go back. I'm going to read you something that I wrote. And usually what I do is I'll walk into wherever I'm at in the country, whether it be a veteran service organization post, um, policemen's beloved in society, um, a bar where firemen gather, wherever I'm at, I walk into one of these establishments and I buy the house around. And I tell them, in exchange for me buying your round of drinks, I need you to listen to my story about 9-11. Because 9-11 touched me personally. 9-11 made me what I am today. You all know that I am a staunch supporter of veteran causes. And that I am a staunch supporter of our police and firemen and our first responders. But what made me that way? Because I wasn't always that way. Yes, I was always a soldier. But what made me the staunch supporter that I am was 9-11. Now I'm going to do my best to read this and get through this without being emotional. Because for me, it is very emotional. So I'd like you, what I'd like you all to do, sitting at home today listening to this, I'd like you to walk over to the fridge or your bar and get your favorite beverage and hang on to it because it'll become important at the end of this and you'll see why. Where were you when the world stopped turning? It's been 19 years since that morning. A morning burned into my memory in such a way I cannot forget what I saw, what I felt and still feel to this day are feelings I never had before. 
I was a high-priced business consultant delivering a pitch to board members in downtown Houston high-rise. When the first plane struck the World Trade Center North Tower, it was a tragic accident. Fifteen minutes later, 9.02 a.m., Flight 175 slammed into the South Tower, and I knew America was under attack. As implausible as it seemed at the time, someone had just attacked the United States. I watched in horror, paralyzed by the very thought that the United States could be attacked in this manner. It was time that I contacted Colonel Lampf. He was at the Pentagon. He was going to find out what was going on. Had the balloon finally gone up? As I'm navigating my way through the intricacies of the Pentagon switchboard, 30 minutes after I just watched on live TV as Flight 175 slammed into the South Tower, the line went dead. I ran back to the conference room. I turned up the TV volume just as America was being informed that the Pentagon was also hit and to stand by for the video. The Pentagon? Attacked? That's, that's just not possible. It's just not possible. But it was, and then the reports came in, the full impact of what was happening hit me. We were at war. And my God, I had just lost Omph and Wendy Sue, both at the same time. God, I cannot have lost them both. Okay, I admit it. It kind of flipped into what my wife calls my combat operations mode. And those that have served with me Called it dangerous, and yes, it is spelled with a capital D. You think I'd be prepared? in my combat operations mode, I said, okay, let's work the steps. Step one, secure the AL. Okay, I'm in downtown Houston in a client's office on the sixth floor. The AO is filled with civilians, unsecurable. And I'm not too sure about the loyalty of some of these people. The situation is fluid and I cannot evac. Okay, okay. Let's assess the current situation and determine possible internal threats, avenues of attack, threat vectors. Protect the non-combatants. Step two, determine your assets. I called home. I read my wife into what was happening, and I had to get her daughter, had her get our daughter out of school. I looked around to the two other veterans with me and one badass prepper named Tim. They were my support team. Step three, find your battle buddy. I called Brother Johnny. He was already on standby and reporting to his unit. We said our goodbyes just in case. Stay safe, stay vigilant. Till Valhalla, brother. I tried over and over again to get hold of Om from Wendy Sue, but all the lines were jammed. I called her husband over and over again, but no luck. I'm starting to lose it at this point because Wendy Sue worked in the Pentagon on the corridor that was hit. Step four, gather intel. Damn it, I need intel. Where the hell is my battle captains? Why aren't they on the net? 
Why aren't they reporting to the talk? And where is my RTO? Breathe. Breathe. You are not Dragon 6 Actual. Civilians have no idea what a battle captain is, talk, or RTOs, and if they did, they wouldn't give it to you. You are an old, out of shape, disabled veteran running around being a business consultant with a ponytail. Wait. WTF? I grew a ponytail? Yeah, I did. Step five, sit rep. No matter what channel you are watching, the news and information is the same. The FAA, FAA has grounded all air traffic over the skies of the entire United States of America. The president is on Air Force One. The Air Force has scrambled jets and the Navy is sending a missile cruiser to New York City. Okay, this is good, I think. I actually start feeling a little better, but now I'm mad. They attacked us. You do know that we were about to make them crawl back into whatever hole they were born in and pray for death. Hey, at that time, it had only been nine years since I was out, since I wore the uniform of this country. I can go back and do my duty again. Sadly, no, said the local recruiter. He was all apologetic and very sympathetic, but basically he said if the United States of America needed an old, broken-down NBC and CO, they'd give me a call. Until then, go home. Old, broken-down NBC and CO. Step six. Prepare to shoot, move, and communicate. Watch the news. Call Colonel Lump. Call Wendy Sue. Got home and repeated the process of watching and calling. I held on to my wife and daughter. I didn't want to let them out of my sight. I made sure that my 38 and my 9 mil were clean, locked, and loaded, that we had food and water. The vehicles were gassed up. And then I realized that I was not honoring my oath. I wasn't prepared. And I promised myself that that would never happen again. For three days, I was a wreck. I went from preparing for war to inconsolability. I had lost Colonel Lomp and Wendy Sue. Two people I served with. See, the Colonel, Lomp, is the godfather of my daughter. And Wendy Sue, she's been my confidant since the day we met. The one person I told everything to. Omf and Wendy Sue are family, in every sense of that word. God, please, I prayed, please. I can't have lost them both at the same time. Dick, let's go to a break, can we? Stand by, we'll be right back after these important messages. Is there someone you know who is hooked on vintage aircraft? Follow the commemorative Air Force and its fleet of World War II planes, including the mighty B-17 Flying Fortress Texas Raiders, which is based in Conroe, Texas. Texas Raiders tours locally and all around the United States, offering the public a chance to put their hands on aviation history. What could be a more perfect gift than a flight on a historic B-17? Taking to the sky on the iconic bomber is an experience that will never be forgotten. For the touring schedule, reservations, or more information, go to b17texasraiders.org or call 855-FLY-A-B-17. 
God's Garage is a 501c3 that repairs and gives away cars for free to single moms, widows, and wives of deployed military. You can help God's Garage by donating a vehicle, volunteering your time, or by monetary donation. God's Garage is located at 2106 East Davis, Conroe. If you'd like to learn more about God's Garage, visit our website at godsgarage.org. Or you can contact us, and we would be glad to come and make a presentation to your group. Does volunteering at a nonprofit horse sanctuary sound wonderful? Or are you a veteran or a veteran spouse and think trying a peer group session through a local Horses and Heroes equine program might be worth trying? Henry's Home Horse and Human Sanctuary, located in Grand Central Park by appointment only, is home to a growing number of rescued and donated horses. Visit our website at henryshomehorsesanctuary.org or check out our Facebook at Henry's Home Horse and Human Sanctuary for more information. Welcome back. As I was saying, Colonel Omph and Wendy Sue, they were family. And I was praying to God that I hadn't lost them, though I knew I had. The video was irrefutable. Whether you want to call it a plane, a missile, the CIA, I don't care. All I know is slammed into the, the corridor where people I loved worked in the middle of a workday in the morning. I knew they were at their desks. Someone took people I love from me and they put Brother Johnny back in harm's way. With my dying breath, I will avenge them, I swore. It was another three days in hell bouncing back and forth between wretched despair and preparing for war. I could have gone either way. I finally got calls. My phone rang. It's Colonel Umfroy. Wendy Sue called in. They were both okay. Just so happens that Wendy Sue was not at the Pentagon that morning. She was across the street in the Navy Annex. And when it happened, they sequestered everybody, of course, and took all their phones. But she was taken care of for those three days. She wasn't there. Now, Omph, well, the Colonel's whereabouts is always on a need-to-know basis. But thankfully, he was out of pocket at the time. I hit my knees and I thanked God for giving me back what I was sure that I had lost. As I've said, it's been 19 years since that day and a lot in America has changed. We've had wars and Bleep whole countries that politicians do not have the stomach or the will to win. We have veterans coming back from these wars shattered and broken in body and mind. We've got talking heads and politicians telling us that it's all okay. Just open your hearts and minds. Islam is a religion of peace love and tolerance. Illegal aliens in this country have more rights than some American citizens. And if you are a patriotic American and you're proud of it, you are a threat to the state. A lot has changed in America since that day. Because on September 12th, when I walked out my front door, looked up the street and down the street, Every single house was flying the American flag. Today, there's only two on my entire block. I will not forget the people who have died or the awful anguish I felt when I thought that I had lost people I love. I will not forget the New York City Fire Department or the New York City 
Police Department. These brave men and women who rushed into the burning hell that was the Twin Towers to save as many as they could. A lot of them didn't make it back out again. A lot of them today are dying of cancer from the chemicals and toxic fumes and smoke. They didn't care. They went in to save you and me. Because when you put on that uniform, when you stand as a firefighter, as a policeman, as an EMT, and you put on that uniform in the morning, you know it's not about you. You don't do it for the money. Now, I have an EMT friend, good friend of mine. She's an EMT, extremely well at what she does. She makes $11.50 an hour. But they're willing to die for you. They don't want to. But if that's what it takes. I will not forget the sight of men and women leaping from the 99th floor of the World Trade Centers, choosing instant death over being roasted alive, throwing them ourselves out the window from the 99th floor because they're trapped between two fires and they didn't want to go out that way. I will not forget the mayor of New York City who held that city together by the sheer force of his will as he's evacuating South Manhattan. I will not forget the way this nation was brought to its knees. I will not forget seeing that mighty skyline fall. I will not forget the impact on me when visiting the site of the Twin Towers years later, the site of the roses as they tumbled into the pit, reminded me of the tragedy that fell upon us that day and the brave souls that fought it. So yes, you can do as you will, and I will do what I've done ever since that day. I will never forget. I will never forgive. It was 9-11 that made me the way I am today. It was 9-11 that forged my will to do for my fellow veterans and render support to our first responders. Shave my head and cut off my ponytail. I will continue to serve my fellow veterans to the best of my abilities. I will continue to be a champion for the immigrants who came here through the front door. That want to be Americans and not make enclaves of their old countries. I will continue to honor our police, firemen, and EMT first responders. America, you swore that you would never forget, but I think you have. You have welcomed caravans of illegal aliens to our shores without vetting them. Just let them come on in. You've elected Islam to our government that stand in the very halls of Congress and preach hate and death to America. I'm not exaggerating on that. Google it. Look for yourself. In the name of political correctness, you have allowed godliness, deviance, and perversion to rule our society. You preach the virtues of socialism to our children while teaching hate for American values. If you stand for America, if you stand or sympathize, if you stand against America, if you stand or sympathize with those that would do us harm or destroy the American lifestyle, then let this serve you as a warning. I do solemnly swear 
that I will defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will execute the lawful orders of the President of the United States. I'm keeping my oath alive, and I am embarrassed that they were years between when I left the service to 9-11 when I didn't, but not anymore. I want to thank you all for listening to my story. I hope this resonates with some of you out there. I hope that you can understand better the way that I feel. And now you understand why I feel that way. September 11th is a hard day for me. Though by the grace of God, I still have on from Wendy Sue. I knew what it felt like when I thought I had lost them. And I never want to go through that again. I told you all to grab your favorite beverage. As I have mine here. And we're going to do a traditional three-point toast. You ever do a three-point toast before? Never been to a dining inn, huh? Yeah, all the old NCOs will know about this. But we're going to do three toasts, and we're going to drink. So raise your glass. For we honor our fallen. Many times down through the years, our country has called, and many, many men and women have answered that call. Let's not forget our fallen. Let us honor them always, for they have earned our respect and admiration with their very lives to our fallen comrades. Raise a glass to those who think of others in danger before themselves, for our police, our firemen, and first responders who risk their safety and their lives every day for me, my family, my neighbors, and my friends to our first responders. Raise your glass finally for the United States of America. I have fought for her, I have bled for her, and I'm willing to die to protect the freedoms and the liberties of the United States to the United States of America. Where am I at? I'm close, right? Look at that. I had time to do closing, right? Good. I'm going to give a shout. Two minutes? Good. We'll have enough time to do the song. We're going to do a special song at the end of this. Uh, but first, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, East Meets West Productions. Um, Veterans Air is made possible by the support of East Meets West Productions, a full-service business and marketing consulting firm helping vets start and fund their businesses for almost 30 years. For more information, call 361-904-0044. That about wraps up our show today. But remember to tune in on October 6th at 1 p.m. for our next show. And remember to like Veterans Air on Facebook and follow us so you can be informed about what we're doing. Because I think that we're going to start doing some individual podcasts, some interviews again. Um, COVID has pretty much nixed that out, but we're going we're to try. Now, I'm going to change my... my normal trademark closing a little bit today. And I'm going to leave you with a new song. The song is an old song. It's by Alan Jackson. Where were you? While we're listening to this, let us remember our police, our firemen, our first responders, and military in uniform that today are standing in harm's way they stand for your safety, for your freedoms, and for your liberty. If you are wearing the uniform, I want to say to you, thank you. 
I want to say to you that I'm proud of you. And until next month, stay safe and stay vigilant. Where were you when the world stopped turning on that September day? Were you in the yard with your wife and children or working on some stage in L.A.? Did you stand there in shock at the sight of that black smoke rising against that blue sky? Did you shout out in anger and fear for your did you just sit down and cry? Did you weep for the children who lost their dear loved ones and pray for the ones who don't know? Did you rejoice for the people who walked from the rubble and sobbed for the ones left below? Did you burst out with pride for the red, white, and blue? And the heroes who died just doing what they do Did you look up to heaven for some kind of answer And look at yourself and what really matters I'm just a singer of simple songs I'm not a real political man I watch CNN but I'm not sure I can tell you The difference in Iraq and Iran but I know Jesus and I talk to God And I remember this from when I was young Faith, hope, and love are some good things He gave us And the greatest is love Where were you when the world stopped turning On that September day? Teaching a class full of innocent children Or driving down some cold interstate Did you feel guilty cause you're a survivor? In a crowded room did you feel alone? Did you call up your mother and tell her you loved her? Did you dust off that Bible at home? Did you open your eyes and hope it never happened? Close your eyes and not go to sleep. Did you notice the sunset the first time in ages? Or speak to some stranger on the street. Did you lay down at night and think of tomorrow? Go out and buy you a gun. Did you turn off that violent old movie you're watching? Turn on out of blue Siri runs Did you go to a church and hold hands with some strangers Stand in line and give your own blood Did you just stay home and cling tight to your family Thank God you had somebody to love I'm just a singer of simple songs I'm not a real political man I watch CNN, but I'm not sure I can tell you the difference in our rock and our end. But I know Jesus and I talk to God, and I remember this from when I was young. Faith, hope, and love are some good things He gave us, and the greatest is love. I'm just a singer of simple songs, I'm not a real political man. I watch CNN, but I'm not sure I can tell you the difference in our rock and our rain. But I know Jesus and I talk to God, and I remember this from when I was young. Faith, hope, and love are some good things He gave us. And the greatest is love And the greatest is love And the greatest is love Where were you when the world stopped turning On that September day?
Today's show was recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and all rights and ownership are reserved to Lone Star Community Radio. For more information regarding this program and Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, serving the community with local programming on TV, radio, and online. If you enjoyed today's program, please support us by sponsorship or starting your own show. Contact us today by phone or text at 936-666-1084 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.